Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Art Starts explores our province of play. My name is Kay Slater and I am the Preparator and Gallery Facilitator at Art Starts and Schools. This month we are going to be exploring grids. Do you notice that I have a grid right here in my space? On my cutting mat I have a grid. A grid is a network or group of lines that cross each other to form a series of squares or rectangles. Can you think of why it would be useful to have a grid on a cutting mat? I like to use it when I am planning out different pieces of paper because I will line up the edges of my paper. And then if I want something to be exactly square or um, exactly a rectangle with equal sides, I can then fold my paper using this grid that's on my cutting mat. There we go. And then I can unfold it and use it this way. And there we go. So for me, in my art space, it's very useful for me to have a grid here because I don't need to get a ruler out. I can just use the grid that's on my cutting mat. People who sew or quilt or make clothing um, or practice textiles, they'll also have grids on their cutting mats because it's the same thing. It's helpful to be able to um, put fabric against these grid lines and help you match things up. Can you think of other ways we use grids in our daily lives? For today, I thought we could practice exploring grids by using them to copy. 
if you're going to be exploring at the same time with me this week, do you have any mark making tools? Those could be markers, pencils, pencil crayons, anything that marks up the page. Do you have any paper? I went into my recycling bin and I got a couple of different pieces of paper as well as I had a couple of pieces of leftover paper from a binder that wasn't being used. So I pulled those out. Lastly, because we're gonna be using grids to copy, do you have something to copy? That could be a favorite book. That could be a magazine and there's a, a picture that you wanna, you wanna try and practice copying. It could be a picture of yourself. It could be anything. And remember, when we're exploring for Art Starts Explores, nothing is for keeps. So normally, if we were going to be copying something that might not belong to us, or was made or drawn by somebody else, or was a picture from a culture or a practice that was not our own, we wouldn't want to copy it especially because um, at that point, it would be something we'd be showing other people. But when we're just playing and practicing and copying in our own space, sometimes copying things that we wouldn't normally copy and show other people can be really helpful because it can teach us to um, explore different techniques or to problem solve in ways that we wouldn't normally do because we're practicing respect. So for today, it's really open. Whatever you want to try and copy, go and grab something to copy. I grabbed a copy of a book that I really, really like because I am an illustrator. I'm somebody who draws. I have this book called How to Draw Black People. And this is a great book because it helps me um, learn more about how to draw specific faces for black bodies especially because I am a white person and I grew up drawing mostly white faces. And so this can help me, or this book helps me realize um, in, in what ways I am not diversifying or not um, respecting different bodies and specifically black bodies that are just shaped and have different features than I do. And it is important that I learn to draw black people respectfully. This is an awesome book, by the way, and if you were looking for a great book when you are learning how to draw, uh, I really do recommend that you pick up a copy of How to Draw Black People. So I am going to be copying the face on the front here as I continue to practice to be able to respectfully draw black faces. But you can draw anything that you're going to be copying today. I also have this sticky with this line here that has a couple of different options of ways to copy with a grid. You might not have all of these options or any of these options. You might have all of these options, but these are just a couple of different ways that you can practice using grids um, using these different materials. So do you have any wax paper? I had a piece of wax paper that um, I had used in the kitchen that was pretty clean. It's kind of crinkled, but that's okay because it doesn't matter. It's just for exploring. It's not a perfect cut. Do you have a window in your space where the sun is shining behind it? Because that is a great way of using um, the light behind your window as a light box. And I will show you how to use um, a window. Do you have any envelopes that have plastic windows? So if you're checking in your recycling bin, you might have seen um, these kind of, they're called envelopes with windows where they have this plastic that you can see through and usually an address is on the other side here. These are great for copying. Um, you can rip them out of your envelopes. And then if you're really careful, you can actually peel the plastic away and you can take it right off of the paper. Oh, you got to go real careful though, because I already ripped it. But you can leave it in the envelope, right? I'm, I can leave this one right here and draw it there. But if you're really slow and you're really careful, 
you can uh, rip it free and then you can have that piece of plastic um, away from the envelope. It didn't work for me. So I'm going to use that piece right there. So that's another way that we can be copying. And then uh, my last one was plastic. And so if you got any kind of toys or somebody in um, wherever you are ha bought something recently, like a tool or something from the kitchen that has a hard piece of plastic, you can take these as well and use these in your, um, in your art making today as we copy things over. Um, I usually will rip these out whenever there is um, something that I buy that has a nice hard piece of plastic because it's great for tracing. Okay, so let's start exploring some of these different ways that we can use grids to copy pictures. So first, let's set up our grid. And so I said uh, we could use wax paper. And so the easiest way to use wax paper, um, especially because wax paper isn't always the best at keeping um, mark making uh, on its surface because of how, like it's designed to keep things out, you can see here that my line just basically got smushed. So I'm not gonna use a mark making tool. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna fold my wax paper. And I'm not gonna follow, I happen to have a grid, but I'm gonna pretend like my space doesn't have a grid, just like yours. And I'm gonna fold it in as many equal sections as I can. It's okay. Do you see how it's not, it's not perfect. I don't have a, a perfect uh, edge over here. This was, this was ripped over here, but I'll still fold it over to try and make it as much uh, part of the rectangle that I'm doing. I think I'm going to unfold this now, fold these in half. And so I'm just guiding all of my edges together to try and create as many rectangles and squares as I can. ripped it out there. Oh well, that's okay. All right, I'm going to unfold it now and check it out. Now I have this grid that's on my on my uh, piece of wax paper. And what's great about wax paper is that you can see through it. So if I was going to take my really awesome book and you were going to take whatever you are going to be copying, and you lay it over top of the picture that you want to be practicing to draw, you can see through to the other side of the picture. You don't need to have tracing paper and you've got this grid that is laid over top of your picture. Before I start actually copying, I'm going to show you the other methods using um, the window and the plastic wrap. Um, but in the end, I might actually end up just using that, my wax paper because that turned out really well. Okay, so the next one was uh, a window. So in this case, because I was using um, a book, this one's not going to be so easy because I can't really get the light to go through uh, my book here. And I don't really want to rip my, my book so that the page um, can be pushed against the window. So maybe for this one, I'll use a different picture. I'll draw what? Oh, baby with a pizza. There you go. So I'll draw baby with a pizza here. All right, let's head over to a window. So here we are at my snowy window. 
On my way from my artboard over to the window, I messed up the, uh, the pizza eating baby picture. So I've got a new picture from a magazine. And what you can see is, is I have taped it to my window and underneath it, I have a piece of gridded paper. And I drew this grid and you can draw your own grid or you could get a page of gridded paper, print some paper, um, get a grid from the internet, uh, whatever you'd like. And what this lets you do is that if you had a picture that you didn't want to draw a grid on top of, like this is from a magazine, so I could have totally just drawn on the picture, but I didn't want to wreck the picture. And so instead, what I've got is I've got the grid showing through to my picture. And now what I can do is I can use this picture to, uh, to copy over to another grid. What's really cool about this method is that when you use a grid, uh, the, the second grid that you draw into can be smaller or larger, depending on whether or not you want um, the picture to be smaller or larger when you transfer it. So this is what I mean. Right now you can see that this person's uh, face fills up one, two, three, four, five, six, basically six, and then the top of their head is eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, grids. I don't have, uh, well actually I do, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have exactly eight here. And so I've got um, a bigger grid. Can you see it here? No. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this over here just so I can have more space. There we go. And then there's my grid. And so you can see my squares here are much bigger than the squares that I have here. In fact, two of these squares is one of my squares here. So now what I'm going to be drawing, I'm going to be looking at this grid right here. So these are three down from the top. Drawing here, well, the shapes that I'm going to be tracing from that drawing are going to be bigger because my, my grid is bigger. So this is an easy way to do copying and enlarging, making something bigger. Biz, and then her mouth, not quite halfway down, just a little bit higher. And then the side of her face comes up here, and that's where her hair was. grid or the side of her head comes down a little bit further into this grid and so I'm looking back and forth back and forth to make sure that the shapes that I'm drawing are matching the grid that I'm tracing from and there we go ponytail comes over to the side here just real quick and there we go so now my face is larger than the original face that was there but I was still able to follow the grids here as I traced her face onto oops down here onto this page so that's using windows so that's just one way of using uh, grids to copy So that's using windows to, uh, to copy, but also to uh, enlarge, to uh, transfer a picture that is uh, smaller into a larger space or vice versa or the opposite. So now let's explore using um, the envelope method that I was talking about. So because this is a pretty small space and you might have a, um, an envelope that has a bigger window or if you have a big um, a big envelope, one of the, the large letter size ones. Sometimes they're a little bit bigger. So you can't really trace as much here. But I have, I have enough space. Actually, I think I can do both eyes here. Yeah, I can do both eyes here. So same thing. I can see through um, this window to these two eyes. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, put a grid on my in my plastic using the same method as I used for my um, my wax paper. I could draw on this if I wanted to, 
and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fold. And if you are practicing using the envelope method yourself, you could try using different kinds of materials to um, to trace a grid onto uh, onto your plastic. See what works, what doesn't. If there are any markers that may be um, a smudge like uh, on the wax paper or ones that stick. I think I've used Sharpie before and it's worked okay. So I'm lining up all my lines that I came, that came before. Doing, uh, doing my crisscross of grids. And if you had a ruler, you could totally just measure out uh, you you, uh, you wouldn't have to fold, right? If you were using um, markers or pens or whatever. Okay, I'm going to do one more, one more set. You can also play with how many grid lines you want to have. Maybe you want to have more grid lines or fewer grid lines. What's different? Do you find it easier when you have more grid lines? versus having fewer grid lines. What happens? Then one more. All right. Okay, there we go. So I've got my grid on my envelope. And now when I'm ready to start tracing those eyes, I can use that grid. It's the same thing for the hard plastic, but the hard plastic you can't really fold. So for this one, you probably are going to want to use markers. But what's cool about this kind of hard plastic is, is that for most markers that you're going to use, unless you use a permanent marker, you're going to be able to trace your grid onto the hard plastic and then wash it off afterwards. Uh, maybe a soap and water will work, but um, if not, you could use some vinegar with a grown up or just some soap. There we go. Oh, it's still, <laughs> I still smudged it. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit, but same thing, right? So instead of folding it, I just drew it onto the plastic. And then I'd probably want to use the side that I didn't, uh, I didn't draw on to hold against my, uh, the, the thing that I'm going to be uh, copying so that it doesn't smudge onto the original picture. Okay, I'm going to use my envelope. I know I said I was going to use my wax paper, but I really like this and I'm going to use this to copy my copy the eyes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece of paper. I'll take this folded piece of paper. I'm going to move these stickies over. All right. So if it doesn't lay flat, you can keep flattening it like this. It's probably not going to get rid of your folds in your plastic, right? If you had some tape and it was okay to put some tape on your surface, you could do that too. If you had something um, heavy that would hold it down, you could do that as well. I have a level right here. There we go. I can't really see though if I do that. There we go. That's better. Okay. So basically, I just want the grid to not move. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a grid over here. And remember, this, is, this isn't for keeps. This is just for practice. So if you were going to be doing this for keeps, you might want to actually have um, a ruler with you to make sure that you could get really straight, um, perfect lines. But this isn't for keeps, so it's okay. I don't need it to be perfect. I'm just going to use my pencil here. 
and I had, okay, one, one, two, three lines for my grid. There we go. And I think I'm going to fold now. There we go. So I had, uh, there's my center, then one, two, three, four folds. Oh, I think I didn't do this long enough. I'll go right to the end of the page. There we go. That's okay. I might make mistakes as I go along. I'm, I'm learning and practicing and exploring along with you. If I make some mistakes and I learn something as well, that's great. All right. Is that right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yep. And I'm just going to extend my lines right to the end. Actually, I'll just fold those too. Because why not? There we go. And now my folded lines are probably even more straight than they would have been uh, if I had just drawn them all. There we go. Okay. So there's my grid. And so I'm going to ignore all this space over here because that's where my envelopes, my envelope isn't. And then it's kind of hard for me to see the, the grid lines. So I'm gonna just draw where I folded just so it's really clear for me. And there we go, there's my grid. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna look very slowly, very carefully in each one of my gridded squares and copy them over. So in these middle sections here, these four squares, I don't see anything. See, there's nothing there. But if I look over on this square here, part of the eye starts right at the corner of that square. And it doesn't go all the way down to the halfway mark. It doesn't even go to the quarter. It only comes down a little bit. And then ends about here. Then same thing, looking over here. No, it doesn't go all the way to the halfway mark, but it does kind of go to, if I was going to see this as a, there's half of the square. And there's half of the half of the square. Yeah, it kind of goes to the quarter mark, one quarter of this. There we go. And then down a little bit further over here. And then about halfway along this line here is where it curves up. There we go. So there's the bottom of the eye, and then I'm gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna keep watching the grid as I fill in the rest of it, using my, my eye to map out within a square where the shape is. And I have to go pretty slow because I really have to look in each, in each square where everything is so that it all matches up, so that it all lines up. It looks like there's a lid right over here. It comes over like this. And then the iris, the, the uh, black part inside of the eye starts right on the inside of this square grid and goes just over on this grid here, and then comes down, and then over here, and then up there. There we go. And there's like this little fleck of light that's right there. So I'm able to get a pretty good exact copy because I have to slow down and the grid helps me when I look away from the picture to figure out what I need to draw next. Is there anything else I'm missing? Oh, it looks like the bottom of the lid as well. Starts about here. Goes over here. There we go. 
and I could keep going to the other side. So remember one, two, three, four, there was nothing there. And then about halfway through this one, down at the bottom, that's where the lid starts. And then comes in. Okay, so then I can pull this away and I can go, okay, were there things that I, that I weren't, I wasn't able to see because, I mean, even though this is transparent, there's some light that shines here, maybe it's not completely obvious, maybe there's some light um, that I missed, maybe there's some shadow that I want to come in and I want to keep uh, coloring now that I've got um, basic, the, the basic layout of where things are going to be. I know that these eyes are are correctly spaced out on the page rather than sometimes when you're copying something freehand without a grid or something to be able to check back and forth to um, you're drawing along and you go oh no the eyes are too far apart or if you're drawing a house um, maybe the window is too far over and the, the door is supposed to be right underneath but you drew the door first and now the window is too far over and so grids really help you plan your space um, as you're drawing um, and so the same thing, if I was going to be using my, my plastic, did it dry? Oh, no, not 100%. It's pretty good now, though. I could do the same thing here and do more of the face and go, okay, so if I had a grid here, I know that the nose is completely within that middle space here and that the eyes are up here. Oh, and comes over a little bit into the grid here and that the mouth starts here and basically takes up all of my middle grid and so by using that grid I really can uh, plan out how uh, and where the different objects uh, are supposed to go. This is just one way that we can be exploring grids. And I'm looking forward to in the next couple of weeks, uh, exploring a couple of other ways that you can use grid in your art making and play. Did you end up trying something new today as you used grids to copy? Like I do every week, I'm going to leave my camera running as I clean up my space. But we're going to put everything away in the recycling bin and nothing uh, that we made today we're going to keep. But what did you learn and what did you try that you're going to keep in your brain from your exploration today? I think I'm going to keep folding paper rather than drawing my grid lines when I do this kind of practicing um, because then I don't have to really worry about the grids being perfect. My, my folds are always going to look a little bit more precise than my drawing, uh, drawing squares even when I'm just practicing really quick. What did you learn today? All right, I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now.